Hey guys, welcome to Bar Z. My name's Stan, and uh, we're doing some more post bash cleanup. Some random things around the shop. Thought you guys might like to tag along and see what I'm up to. Well, first of all, for those of you that attended the uh, gear cutting class, you probably noticed that my segment was a little uh, wonky. And what I've done to fix that is inside, I've, I've actually counterboard uh, the main segment, which is in the back. And I've added a second set screw there. And you see we've added a, uh, this is a uh, little space to get to that little uh, locking collar. So you can actually lock this collar now before you couldn't. Behind it, I've installed a wave washer. So it's got a very, it's got a very firm feel. And then when you lock up the, uh, the actual segment, They, they're as one and it's got a nice firm feel and um, I I think I witnessed them losing spaces they they were in the middle of cutting a gear and they lost their place because the segment slipped because there was only one screw in it before adding a second screw uh, pinches that sliding collar this one's got a washer this one doesn't the head of the screw actually pinches right on it and then with that weight there's a wave washer right behind there that just provides just the right amount of tension you can adjust the tension with this locking collar, but now you can lock it. So, uh, fix my segment. So next year's gear class hopefully goes good and we don't spoil uh, a student's work. Uh, that was pretty embarrassing actually. Uh, I, I bought the, the wheels and the segment and you know the crank arm and all the stuff for, the, for my super spacer, but I, never, I test fitted it and I go, yeah, it's good. Uh, but never really put it to use. So I saw it in use and saw there was an issue, fixed. The other thing was there was actually some interest in this old stencil machine. So you know what? I got on YouTube and I watched a video of a guy using one. I didn't, couldn't find any really good disassembly videos, but uh, um, this, thing, this thing's supposed to spin really freely, and now it does. Thumb and forefinger. It was really nice. Like I, I told you before, this thing was filled with rainwater, and I completely disassembled this thing. And um, the only thing I got now is um, in here there's an escapement wheel that provides a step over. Well, it doesn't always step over the correct amount. And you see I've got some limit lines here. I've been testing the escapement wheel, and that still needs to be taken apart. Um, but I've, I took apart the, uh, the turret, the upper and lower turret separate. And I was able to get in there and clean out all the stamped out paper that had been stuck in there and the years of goo and everything else. So I was able to able to do some of that. And if after I fix that escapement wheel, this thing's gonna work really good. I can uh, I can pull this thing out for you a little bit and uh, show you that turret with all the male and female dyes. Males up here, females down there, and those all just, and these are, these are tapered, so they actually cut the paper on the edges before they cut the center, so they, works kind of like a pair of scissors going in there. But those have all been cleaned, I polished all the tops of all those dyes, and it just, like I said, it just spins really freely now. And there's a detent in there, when you do put it around on a, on a letter or a number, if you don't get it, right on spot on when you stamp down when you bring this lever down to punch it rolls a, a detent ball in there there's like a and see now I can't turn that so even if you're a little bit off it'll it'll all you gotta do is get it close and it'll self adjust alright so uh, yeah pretty neat and that's spring loaded for all the uh, all the different lines of uh, text. This is kind of a blue steel, like a spring steel plate here. Rusty, I polished it with some Scott Bright, Scotch Bright. I didn't really take it all off, but uh, got to clean it up where it won't, uh, you know, get your paper dirty going through. Uh, this handle was nickel plated. It is no longer nickel plated. You'll notice that all the hardware is nickel plated which is uh, something people certainly don't do. I mean, for God's sakes, this thing's over 110 years old and still works. 
but I think it's more like a survivor. It's got the gold pinstripe on the black lacquer. I don't think I want to restore it. It would, it would certainly look cool, fully disassembled, fully painted, re-pinstriped, but, and then uh, it's got the decal filigree on the side, and there's still enough of it left there that I think I want to just leave it alone. And we'll touch up some of these letters, some white, just touch them up with a paint pen here, and where it says do not cut metal here. But uh, no full restoration, just uh, kind of a survivor kind of thing, because uh, this thing's so far it's working really good. After I fix that escapement wheel, I think we're in good shape. And I'm working on a raffle. This is all I got left to ship out. Some of you guys have already gotten your prizes, so I've got these to ship out. Uh, we pull your we pull your PayPal receipt, find your address. Hopefully, you got the correct address on your PayPal, or these things are going to the wrong place. Uh, some of you look for an email. Some of you used uh, will call as your option when you checked out. And uh, if you don't want to, you know, <laughs> drive across the country to pick up your prize, when you pick will call, it uses my address, not yours. So uh, if I send you an email wanting an, wanting an address, uh, make sure you get that to me. Keep an eye on your junk folder. I may be sending you an email um, to get the correct address. Well, I don't know if someone's trying to tell me something, but this magically appeared uh, at my mailbox. It's from Shars. There was no note. There was no indication. No one sent me any <laughs> anything on it. Uh, I checked with all the usual suspects. It's an R8 to inch and a quarter arbor with some spacers. Uh, you got quarter inch spacers, half inch spacer, and a one inch spacer. And that will mount these cutting type wheels on, on my vertical mill. So if that was you, I appreciate it. Leave a note down in the comments if it was you. Holy moly, I don't know who to thank. But uh, those that just came out of nowhere. But I think they were trying to tell me something about my, uh, my cutters that were out on my swap meet table. This is all I got left. Sold an awful lot of them. Uh, lost and found. Those aren't mine. I haven't even opened them up yet, but it looks like a box of Norton stones and something's wrapped up in those rags. I just now spotted them and uh, I need to dig those out. I think they're Brian's. I'm pretty sure those are his straight edges. I don't know why they're on the floor. Okay, Brian shot a little bit of B-roll. I managed to get it off his SD card and onto my laptop. Uh, I'm just going to roll those. There's really no walking you through it. It's just... Uh, me and Phil screwing around before the bash when we thought we still had time on our hands. Boy, were we wrong. But uh, we were still scrambling at the last minute. But, you know, the pressure really wasn't on us yet, so we kind of thought, oh, okay, we can screw around in the shop. Um, we made a small punch out of some D2, and we made a cylinder square uh, that we're, we were going to grind. Uh, we didn't have time to grind it or finish it, actually. We started grinding it, but we didn't finish it. We did get it made and hardened and that's about all we that's as far as we got uh, but here's some uh, heat treating action Hold on here. But that is an air quenched. That is a punch that I broke the other day. That is a punch for my C frame punch made out of D2. Does that have a microphone? Mm -hmm. Well, that's a good thing. Yeah. Otherwise, I'm just talking for no reason. Yep. Well, B rolls usually don't have sound. Right. I think 
We are good. Cool. Let's get the temp gun out just for shits and giggles. Right, since we got a camera on it. Well, I just want to see what temp it's at. I don't think I can force cool it anymore. Yeah, it's at about 460. Well, she's cool enough to. Uh, that from there it goes to down in the air. I'll do your door. Okay. If at any at any moment you think you want me to do it, I'll do it. You can slide it on that. I am having to, yeah. Okay. I'm behind. I'm on your right, Phil. Okay. Now I want to be 90 degrees when you're spraying that. So. Yeah, this is gonna this is gonna spray some scale. Yep. 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 Yeah. Stops going red hot, and you're right at 1500 somewhere in there. So, and how far you uh, six, eight, okay. there. so right now we're not getting that red coming, yeah, back yeah, yeah. Well, what was cool is you know, you when you're spraying it with air, and you can see the air cooling it, the heat out of it, yep. Now, if this was like a knife or something flat, what we would do is we'd put it between two aluminum plates, sandwich it, and clamp it to the table and blow air in around the edges. Right. Because air hardening, uh, something without mass like this, well, they want to bend like a pretzel. So that would keep right. it flat while you're quenching. top aluminum plate is getting very warm. I bet it is. You well, want aluminum, well, aluminum's got a very, uh, 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 very thermal. 170, 190? Yeah, I can feel it coming through my glove. The thermal conductivity of aluminum, this would be even worse if it was copper. Well, that'll help, thank you. Am I still spraying hot slag on you? No. In case anyone wonders, this material is D2. Boy, that, that slag just, she decided to snap off of there, yep. didn't she? Thank you, Philip. And it will do that. That slag is glass hard. Yeah.
Yeah, thermal conductivity of aluminum and copper and brass and bronze uh, are very high, so it's, it's very good to lay your parts against those. It'll suck the heat away from them very quickly. Watch out for those slag pops. That's a nice camera. Yep. Yeah, that's the one I wanted to show you. Phil, did you fart? What's our temp, buddy? You're a uh, 7... 8, 8, 850? Yeah, we're, you're well below critical. The only thing I worry about is the heat in the core soaking back out to the outside, but I don't see any more. Right. I mean, if you put it on there, is, is the heat actually rising? I can't get the gun. That's all right, 805. So why air and not water or oil? Uh, we uh, heat treated this at a higher temperature, all the air hardening, uh, A1, and this, is, this material is actually D2. Um, this can actually be oil. Uh, quenched in preheated oil. You do never want to drop this into dead cold oil. So you'd always want to take a scrap part, put it in the oven, drop it in the oil, and uh, preheat your oil and get your oil to about 100 or 100 and a half, and then then drop your part in. You'll shock the part and usually crack it. Uh, but you could you can uh, D2 is very versatile. Air hardening, you got to run it at pretty high, about 1850 and then air harden it, or if you're going to oil harden it, you can do it a little, little lower, about 1700. Cool. Yep. And how long before this will take overnight to cool down before you can grind it, right? Uh, we still got one more step. We're going to uh, um, put it in the oven at about 500 degrees and let it cook for an hour for each inch of uh, thickness. And that is called tempering. Right now, this that part is glass hard. That one, I dropped it on the floor a little while ago. I'm glad it didn't break because it's glass hard too. That could have easily shattered. And what is this here? Same material, D2. This is D2, and you said that's, this is going to be a punch? That's a punch. I broke a punch in my C-frame hydraulic punch. Oh, right, and, right, and right, that's yeah. a replacement. Ds and Ms. D, D grades and M grades uh, can also be used for punches. Yeah, D2 is a good uh, uh, combination of hardness and toughness. There you go. I didn't see that thing ramping back up, Philip. So I think we're good. Is it on? When you do that, is it on the rise? 740. And you said an hour for every inch of thickness, and that's, that's what? Two inch, two and a half inch? That's a two and a half inch round. If you want to know what that is, that is a cylindrical your glove got branded there. But it's hot. It's, it's a, your glove got branded there, buddy. Yep. Okay, watch out. This is coming off. Okay. Crash. What's that? I don't know. 670. The aluminum sucks it out, man. Yeah. Cooled it down pretty quick. 1,000 degrees in five minutes. For all that mass? Yeah. Now you wanted some fire shots. You got some fire shots yeah, there. Yeah, yep, yep, yep. So now you've experienced air hardening. There you go. Yeah, okay. Cylindrical squares are only supposed to work one direction. And so how much did this have to cool before you put it back in and temper it? Uh, I need to get it down about 100 and a quarter. Just let it sit. Okay. And that way, that gives me time to get the oven cooled down and prepped and ready for... Uh, Okay, the and, and then we'll temper it at 500 for two and a half hours. Um, I'm going to look it up to see where I'm going to end up. There's, uh, Philip, there's a relief in the backside. Ooh. Still popping. Still popping, it's like popcorn. But we gave him a, a center, which is all full of scale, but the, center's, the center gets lapped oh, on the milling machine. You use a carbide 60 degree point. Where's the golf cart? I don't know. Down there. There's a there's a 60 degree center point. We lap it with a carbide center with with a little bit of lapping compound. Mm -hmm. We go down there and lap that center and the opposite center nice and square with each other. So when it's spinning in the fixture, it runs very true. Right. Because it's all full of slag and right goop right now. And you can see the depression in there. And when I grind this, all I'm grinding is this small collar right here. It doesn't actually bear down on the surface plate in this center part. Okay. So it just sits on the perimeter. Right. Yep. And then when we grind it, how, how accurate is that going to be? Um, over this six inches, uh, I don't have any trouble getting them to one, one tenth of one thousand. Wow. And so when we're done grinding it, we'll take it and measure it. And I'll, I can, and I'll be able to prove it. Yep. There you go. Well, I, I have been on the prowl for some uh, tri-mics, also known as intra-mics. 
Um, Joe Way had these on his table. The range of these is 0.800 to 1.6. So this is a good start. This is the first I've collected. Uh, setting, setting rings for both. Uh, and they've all been calibrated at one point or another. You see the stickers on them. So uh, I have been on the prowl for a set of tri mics. These have an extension that you can use. So you've got the extender that fits all of them. So this is the first of my collection, and Joe Way made me a very, very fair price on it, and I sure appreciate him. I also picked up this little chain hoist from Tom Lipton. It's a little, little thousand pounder, so a little half ton, but it's compact. It's small, and I shortened the uh, pull chain on it. I still need to shorten the lift chain. It goes all the way down to the floor plus some. But uh, simple eyelet in my chuck, chuck off. Pretty easy to do, and it just. Uh, just roll it around. So changing chucks will be simple and easy now. Easier. Okay guys, hope you enjoyed the B-roll and the random stuff that's going on around here today. There's just, uh, I'm just fixing a few things so that they're already done for next year. You know, gear cutting class, I, I felt kind of bad because my segment failed and I didn't thoroughly test it. Um, but now it's, uh, I think we're in good shape and uh, I think his name was uh, Adam? No, Noah. I knew it was a biblical name. Noah, you're welcome to come back anytime and recut that gear. All right. Uh, that's all I got for now. Thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next one.